what is the best way to start off a team in their agile journey? So not just starting, I think it's a means of how do we get them started so that they can be successful. When we look at sprinters, right? The biggest thing for sprinters is that at the start of it, they have to start right. What the starting right for a sprinter means, it is basically you don't want to be slow. You want to be fast off the block. That's for sprinters. For people that are running marathons, their starting is going to be a little bit different. They don't want to do the same as a sprinters. They are going to make sure that they pace themselves. Now, for any kind of sports that we do, you know, whether it's you know soccer, basketball, whatever that would be, one of the things that we do to make sure that our body is in the right condition when we play sports is to do a warm up. So what is it that is needed for an agile team uh, or an agile organization for that matter to start on the right path? So for me, there's this notion of uh, starting them on specific activities that we do. What is it that we have to get a team? So I talk about team ready in order for them to uh, for example, adopt Scrum. One is ensure that they have the necessary knowledge on Scrum. So you might do Scrum training. Uh, you might want to do also Agile 101 training. Right? Agile is about the mindset. So Agile 101 training tends to be you know, getting our mind thinking in specific Agile manner. For example, inspect and adapt. They might have activities around those things. Uh, thinking in MVP for that matter. Other than those trainings, what else could we do? So if you think about it, when we're trying to get teams uh, coming together to run Scrum, it's about teamwork. So what other activities we can do to ensure that the team can be working together in cohesion? A great example, uh, if you do not know what to do, is to look at the book by Dinah Lawson, Lift Off. So in this book, she talked about the three components that is needed to, in her words, lift this team off in a successful manner. And this is around team chartering, right? So it has the purpose, and then it has alignment, it has context. I'm not going to go into details on those things, but on a high level, uh, purpose, we're talking about you know, the why. Why is the team coming together? In it, you have the proud vision, team mission, and then mission test. So second is alignment. So alignment has to do with, you know, getting to understand each other better. You know, working agreement is one of the big thing in here. Uh, and then a part of it is also, what is our North Star? Well, that tends to be, when we look at it, the values. As a team, what do we value, right? Now, not just values, what I find interesting in uh, this exercise that Dinah Lawson has is this one unique thing that I haven't done before in the past, which is called simple rules. So simple rules is basically, now that we have our values, how are we going to act upon our values? So to me, the power of values isn't just that having the values, but it's actually in simple rules. The last is around context. So we're looking into you know, how are we interacting with each other? What do we have in terms of making us successful? What are our risks? Uh, what are our strengths when we look at those things? Now, those are a blueprint or roadmap that Diana has provided in her book. Yes, there are output that we produce, but what is important is the outcome. Now, in it, she talks about it is not the charter that is important, it is the process of chartering, right? So it's the journey itself. When we think about that, wow, it's not just the output, just like in Agile Manifesto, right? We talk about the first value of Agile Manifesto, you know, people and interactions over process and tools. While there's value in process and tools, it's the interaction and the people. That's what she meant by that. So to getting teams off that to be successful, you have to provide this component of self for the team to come together. Now, I've had questions in the past where, well, my team has already been around for five, six years. I don't need team chartering. It's a waste of time for me to sit down and talk about mission and things like that. And again, I would say, it's not about the charter, but it's about the charter ring. So what are the activities that you would want to put together to ensure that your team are aligned or they understand each other? Most often they're not because it's five or six years. Maybe it's a great chance to pause, 
reset and see if everybody is thinking the same thing. So it's always good exercise to do. One of the things that I like about it is also that it's fun. Make sure to have fun with it. It's part of team building too, right? So apart from that, that when you do training and then you do the more considered team charting process, what's the last thing to do? Well, getting the team ready in this new way of doing things. Let's say, for example, if your team has been doing a more of a project management style of work traditional and you're moving them to Scrum, you need to create a backlog. So part of the process is creating the backlog, right? So think about that. Now, for the team, whether you're running Scrum or Kanban, I think it's important for you to go to these three steps. Now, most often when it comes to the last step, in terms of having a backlog, if you're running Kanban, for example, you know, it's just in time or you're doing planned work, you may have to touch on those. But even if you're not running Agile for that matter, if you have a group of people coming together, it is still important for you to start them in the right uh, thinking, in the right space, in the right head, all right, in the right mindset. And I think team chartering is worthwhile. Training, it doesn't have to be Agile training. It could be any type of training that you want to provide. Um, so those are the success uh, steps that I will put in front of a team to ensure that they are moving in the right direction, or at least a chance of being successful. What about leadership? Right? When we talk about agile journey for agile transformation, for that matter, uh, for an organization, what are the successful steps that we can provide uh, for the leaders? Well, you got to have leaders buying, not just them buying in, right? Well, buying in means that they have to be involved in it, they have to agree to it, uh, they also have to go through a form of training as well because things might be different on how they lead, how they manage, for example. So those are things that has to change. You got management, upper management says, I like to go agile. Yes, right? But then if their behavior doesn't reflect or doesn't, uh, isn't the same as what their action is, then it becomes hard. You're sending a mixed message. For example, on agile journey, ideally, it, you should have component of inspect and adapt. You don't want to be planning your agile transformation in such a way that it's a project, a traditional project management uh, transformation, right? Don't treat it that way. Agile in itself is about inspecting and adapting. So take that. Start with the team, right? Run it first, then add on the next team. Right? So you don't have to solve every problem there is because you don't know what those problems are. Every organization, every environment is going to be different. Start with one, then expand slowly. And you don't have to get into pressure and think, wow, we see value now. Let's go do all of it together. Right? You don't have to do that. Uh, similar case, when we look at SAFE, SAFE's implementation framework talks about starting a train for that matter. Right? In it, talks about all the different training. When it thinks about Scrum, same thing, right? When we apply this thing, to be successful, you want to be able to learn from it. You want to have, provide the right mindset. As a leader, you're gonna make sure that you're not sending the mixed message. It is hard to change. Change itself is hard, right? And it's okay for you uh, to stumble. And that's part of the things. I think leadership is one of the key components to ensure that um, the successful agile journey for a team and also for the organization. So what are the things to watch out for? I think I mentioned that before just now in that one, don't treat this as a big project. Don't go for a big bang. MVP it. What can we do? What are the small things we can do today to ensure that we can go in this agile journey? For example, doing one small team at a time finding the right tools for that one team. You don't have to find the tools that fits for the entire organization as a whole, but do it one at a time. See what problem that comes up from it. Inspect and adapt to it. Have a retrospective about it. Uh, so that's one, right? Two, leadership behavior is important. Making sure that, you know, you're not going back to the old ways, right? An example is asking for a project plan. Well, it's great to have a plan, but we all know that plan changes all the time. Uh, the other thing is measuring the right thing. Implementing tools, for example. Uh, we don't want it to be such that 
oh, it's more like a checkoff. Has the tools been implemented? In other words, did we train the people on using the tools? Awesome. That's a success. Well, that's not what Agile is about. Agile is about value. Cool. We trained it. The, our associates or our staff on how to use Jira. But do they, did they really know how to use it? Did they get value from it? We have to go into those things. So those are a couple of things to watch out for, right? It's easy for us to say, ah, we've implemented Jira, so everybody's agile now. Well, not quite, and we all know this, right? We've seen this. Change is hard, um, so it's going to take a while to process this thing. Don't expect to get it perfect uh, in the first go. Expect it to be rough. Expect to refine it as you go. So there you have it. Uh, I talked through what are things that can make a team successful in the agile journey.